All right, everybody, thanks for checking out iTween. Here is a quick run through to get you started. Uh, this is just a simple project in Unity. Uh, there are no scripts at all, it's just so we can start from the ground up. Uh, to get iTween into your project, just go ahead and add it to your project. Uh, it doesn't have to be anywhere specific, but we'll go ahead and put it into our scripts folder just to be a little neat and tidy. Let's make a new JavaScript so we can test things out. Call it tester. And we'll drop it on top of this cube here. Again, there's no special setup on this file. It's just a box and a, and a plane and a light. Uh, nothing too stellar. Um, so, all right, we have a tester script on this box. Let's go ahead and edit it. Uh, by default, of course, Unity gives you the function update. Since we don't want to have this run repeatedly, we'll just go ahead and switch that over to a start so it just fires when things are ready to roll. All right. To make a call to iTween, just go ahead and type in the name of it, iTween, obviously. And let's do a move function here. And that is called move2. Um, there is a complete list of all the available things that iTween can do for you on the document page. Um, and it's just a matter of really kind of toying around with these and playing around with them and see how they work for you. Um, but again, I'm just gonna kind of focus on the simple stuff to get you rolling. And we will start out with uh, the move two, which is right there. All right, so let's go back over to Unitron. All right, and let's move this box. You need to, after you've written the name of the function, you need to give a, um, a target to what iTween's gonna, gonna move. Typically when, you're, when you have a script on a game object and you want that game object itself to be what iTween is moving, you can just give a reference to game object like that. And that is kind of a reference to like itself, I guess. Um, put a comma in put into curly braces and inside here will be a hash table which is basically a structure of a name and value pair so you can put in a property you want to augment or a, a the target of a property and the actual value that you want to have um, the object uh, get to I guess in theory so if we're gonna go ahead and move this up we're gonna to want to move it along the y-axis so in quotes you want to put in y and then let's give it a destination. Right now this cube is at 000, which you can see behind the script window here. So let's go ahead and move it from zero on the Y up to one, okay? And we're not gonna put any other properties in here right now just to show you that uh, iTween was built to be as efficient and uh, I guess quick as possible. So there's a lot of things that you would normally write over and over again with typical scripting languages. I went ahead and put some defaults in here just to kind of save some time. There's no guarantee that defaults are gonna be exactly what you want the end result to be, but you can change those later on and I'll show you this as well. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. Come back over to Unity and compile it, see what happens. As you can see, it moves the box up. We'll go ahead and play it again. Okay, and again, we were able to accomplish that with very little code compared to what it would normally take to do within the Unity editor or Unity scripting language. All right, let's go ahead and get a little tricky here. And I'll show you how you can start branching out once you got the basics down. And let's move it also on the X axis. Okay, now when we run this, it will put both of them to X to one and Y to one. So we got a diagonal movement. And of course, without any surprise, we can also add Z and let that run. And you can't really tell a whole lot, but it went backwards, okay? Which we'll go ahead and throw this again. Okay, but just trust me, it's running on all three uh, axes now. As you can see, the position is now uh, stated as one, one, and 0.5. All right. Let's go ahead and simplify the properties that we're changing just to the Y here. We'll make it go a little bit higher, okay, up to two. And let's change how long it takes this animation to occur. Maybe it's happening too fast for you or it's uh, uh, something you need to do specifically to get a you know, desired effect in your project. The way we change how long an animation occurs is just by 
changing the time property. By default, a majority of the um, methods in iTween have their time set at one. So every, every action you ask iTween to do for you will take one second. Again, you can override those defaults so that you can globally have a um, time frame for all your animations to occur. Um, or you can specifically set them like you are about to do right now with this time variable or time property being changed right here. Let's go ahead and slow it down significantly. So we take three times as long and we'll put three in. So this is, by the way, in seconds. So you could say 0.5 for a half a second and so on and so on. So let's come back over and compile and take a look. As you can see, it took a lot longer. Let's go ahead and make it a lot faster. Okay. Now let's see what that does for us. Wow, it's, it's very fast. Okay, let's go ahead and remove that so we can rely back on the uh, default time of uh, animation for just one second. And let's go ahead and change how the, the feel of the animation is. And uh, it, it's basically augmenting the easing curve. If you're not familiar with um, tweeting engines and how they work, you might not understand exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, again, this is something that you want to play around with to get a feeling for what this actually is. And you'll kind of fall in love with a couple of these curves and you'll probably use them over and over again. And the effect is subtle, but definitely gives a, a much more polished uh, effect to your movement. Um, the way you change that is by changing its transition property. By default, iTween, for a majority of these again, um, the default is, I believe, in, out, cubic. I could be wrong. Um, it's been a while since I dug into the code now. I'm trying to forget about all the work it took to do it. Um, but on the website, again, is a list of all the easing curves that are available to you. And this is a lot of um, trial and error and playing around to get one that kind of fits the individual situation that you are trying to uh, take care of. So let's go ahead and uh, test one or two of them out real quick. All right, so after the transition, put a colon in like normal, and then put the name of an easing curve in quotes. Let's go ahead and we can just copy them right off the website. That way don't, you don't have to type it in. Let's try spring. Okay, come back over. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, and let's put spring in as our property and see what that does. You notice it got to its target and kind of bounced a little bit. And you can, you can exaggerate that again by changing the time. Sorry, I evidently can't type tonight. Um, let's make it a little bit longer. So now it's going to be two seconds rather than the one second it is by default. And you can kind of see how it's kind of springs at the top there. Let's go ahead and try another curve just to see kind of what the effects are real quick that you can get. Let's try, um, let's try ease out, ease out quad. Okay, this may be a subtle one, but we'll see what we get, what we get out of it. Okay, all right, paste that down, ease out quad. That's a, that's a very subtle one. Let me get something a little bit more dramatic. Let's say ease out expo, ease out expo. Okay, Unitron. Put that one in, let her run. Okay, as you can see, it kind of it kind of eased to the target at the end of the uh, animation there. And the reason why it's doing it at the end of the animation is because we chose ease out expo. If we were to replace the out with in, as you probably guessed it, it'll apply that curve or that easing at the beginning of the animation which is good for uh, objects that are falling because objects naturally will gain momentum as they drop. But if you want to get really tricky, you can double up the curve so that it occurs at the beginning of it and the end of it, which you would just need to put an in and out in the beginning of here, in the middle here, which again, you can copy off of the website if you need to. You don't have to memorize these. And that gives you a really nice polished professional feel of the 
the beginning of the animation and the out of the animation, as you can see right here. Okay, I guess that's about it for the simple stuff. Um, I'll see if I can get some more time to do some more advanced topics to kind of show you what you can push out of iTween and what's possible just so you can get in the workflow of how this works. All right, thank you.